This video is all about the AQA required practical on uh, electrolysis. Now, slightly unusually, of all the required practicals, this is the one where the actual practical, practical procedure is kind of the least important. There aren't many questions they can ask you about electrolysis, as in the experiment, but there's a lot of theory behind it, and they are far more likely to ask you questions about that. So at this stage, it would be a very good idea for you to revise ionic and covalent bonding. I'll do a bit of that as we go along. So first of all, I've got a sample of sodium chloride. It's a solid. It's a white crystalline solid. Group 1 bonded to group 7. Ionic bonding. All ionic compounds, as far as we're concerned, are solids at room temperature. They've got high melting and boiling points. So I connect my power supply. It's set to 12 volts to my ionic, ionic compound, and hopefully you can see nothing is happening to the light bulb. Why not? Well, because it's an ionic solid, the ions are all fixed in place. We think of the lattice, something like this. The positive ions cannot move. They can just vibrate a bit, so they cannot move, though, to the negative electrode. Likewise, the negative ions cannot move to the positive electrode. So there is no current flowing. And that's a typical ionic solid. It won't conduct electricity. Next up, distilled water. Distilled water. Water is a covalent compound. Now, all the electrons in the outer shell of oxygen and hydrogen are either involved in bonding, covalent bonding, sharing a pair of electrons, or they're just sitting in oxygen's outer shell. They're not free to move anywhere else. So, I'm just wiping the salt off the electrodes there. When I put the electrodes in pure water, again, nothing happens. The light bulb doesn't come on. This comes as a surprise to many people. They think that water is a good conductor of electricity. In fact, it isn't. But we'll see why in a second water is quite a dangerous thing to have around electricity. Pure water is almost completely covalent. There are no ions that are free to move around. There are also no delocalized electrons. But when I combine the two, so I've got my solid salt, I add my water to it, and you may now be able to see the light bulb beginning to glow. If I stir it up a bit better, as the salt dissolves in the water, instead of my fixed ions in a lattice, my ions are able to move around. So hopefully, can you see that? It's not very bright. The background daylight is far brighter, but hopefully you can see that that light bulb is glowing now. Not particularly brightly because, uh, well, the resistance of the solution is quite high, but hopefully you can see the filament inside there. You can mainly see reflection, unfortunately. But the filament is glowing away quite nicely. So, that's the background theory. Ionic compounds will only conduct electricity if the ions can move around. And the ions can only move around if you dissolve the ionic compound in water or if you melt it. It's quite difficult to melt an ionic compound in a laboratory, so we often just dissolve them. So that's the first point about electrolysis. Now next, I want to revise a bit about ionic bonding. So for example, when a metal reacts with a non-metal, let's take magnesium, for example. It's in group two. That means it's got two electrons in its outer shell. When it reacts with chlorine, chlorine's in group seven, has seven electrons in its outer shell to make magnesium chloride. Magnesium gives away one electron to one chlorine and the other electron to the other chlorine. And what you make is a magnesium ion that has lost two electrons. So it's still got the same number of protons in its nucleus, 12, but it's lost two of its 12 electrons, only got 10 electrons, so it's got a two plus charge because there are two more protons than electrons. Reverse argument for each chlorine, 
Each one has gained an electron, so it's got more electrons than protons. Only gained one electron, so it's only got one more. So each chlorine has now become a chloride ion. And you do need to get the name right. The element is chlorine, the ions are chloride. When it's in a compound, it will be called something chloride. So that's ionic bonding. Remember, the metals lose electrons and they become positive, whereas the non-metals gain electrons and that makes them negative. That's very important. And the more reactive a metal is, the better it is at losing electrons. Now, the reason I've emphasized ionic bonding is because during electrolysis, the exact opposite of ionic bonding is taking place. Instead of atoms losing electrons, in the case of metal, to become ions, and non-metal atoms gaining electrons to become ions, the reverse happens. We would take a compound such as magnesium chloride. It's a solid at room temperature. That's no good. We either have to melt it or dissolve it in water. And let's say we've melted it. So we've now got magnesium 2 plus ions and two separate chloride ions. They're Cl minus. And because we've got it in liquid form, these ions can now move around. So what do they do? If I've got a power supply, connected to a couple of electrodes and I've put the whole reaction in a crucible which I've heated very, very hot so that the magnesium chloride is a liquid, then we've got plus and minus electrodes. Chloride ions, being negatively charged, are going to be attracted to the positive electrode and magnesium 2 plus ions are going to be attracted to the negative electrode. That's a very common exam question. Explain why magnesium forms at the negative electrode. The first mark is just to say, well, because magnesium ions are positive and opposite charges attract. So that's a nice, easy first mark on an explanation. What happens next gets a bit more complicated. The power supply is pushing electrons around the circuit. That's what a power supply does. An electric current in a wire is electrons flowing. And they flow towards the negative electrode. That's what makes it negative. They flow away from the positive electrode. So at the negative electrode, you've got magnesium ions arriving. You've got electrons arriving and the magnesium 2 plus ions are gaining back the two electrons that they lost long ago when they did ionic bonding to make magnesium the element. So, as I said, it's the exact reverse of ionic bonding. When magnesium reacts with chlorine, it gives away two electrons to make magnesium 2 plus. So to get it back to the element, you've got to add the two electrons back. Now, you do also need to know that gaining electrons, gaining electrons is another way of defining reduction. Reduction is gain of electrons. We'll come back to that in a second. Meanwhile, at the other electrode, chlorine, Cl minus ions, are going to the positive electrode important you get these right. Cl minus ions are going to the positive electrode. What's happening there? Well, if you look at the circuit I've drawn, electrons are coming away from the positive electrode. How? Because Cl minus ions are giving away electrons. Going back to the picture of ionic bonding, when magnesium reacts, it gives the chlorine atoms an extra electron, so they become chloride ions. In electrolysis, the chloride ions are giving that electron back. In fact, back to the magnesium. Now, this equation looks fine, except that chlorine, bromine, iodine, fluorine, and lots of other gases like oxygen go around in pairs. So we don't get chlorine atoms in the end. We get a pair of chlorine atoms joining together to make a chlorine molecule. So 
two chloride ions have to give away one electron each, in total two electrons, and that makes the chlorine molecule. Now this equation that includes electrons is called a half equation. And half equations are called that because they only show what's happening in half the reaction. They show what's happening at one of the two electrodes. Now, oxid chlorine, beg your pardon, chlorine is giving away electrons, and that we define as, or it's another way of defining, oxidation. So chloride ions is, chloride ions, perhaps I should say chloride ions, give away electrons. That is oxidation. And a way of remembering, well, what's oxidation and what's reduction? There's a, what we call a, well, a mnemonic to remember it. Oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. You've got to remember oil rig is loss, gain of electrons. The last important bit of theory is about what happens if you do electrolysis of an aqueous solution of a metal like, say, magnesium, well, a metal solution like magnesium chloride. So we'll take the same example again. And instead of magnesium chloride molten, the liquid, we've got magnesium chloride dissolved in water, AQ for aqueous. Now, something different happens. At the positive electrode, you still get chloride ions going there. That's no problem. But at the negative electrode, there is something of a competition going on. Yes, there are magnesium ions dissolved in the water, and they, of course, will be attracted to the negative electrode. But there's something else that's in the water too. Now, I said earlier, water is almost entirely covalent. But there will be a few hydrogen ions. Now, you don't need to worry about why there's only a few or why the fact that there's only a few matters, but there will be a few hydrogen ions and they will also be attracted to the negative electrode. So you've got a competition. Hydrogen ions could gain electrons to make hydrogen, but hydrogen is one of those gases that goes around in pairs, so you have to double everything up. Or magnesium, two plus ions, could gain two electrons to make magnesium. Either of those two could happen in theory. But in practice, this does not happen when you've got an aqueous solution. Why? Because magnesium is much higher than hydrogen in the reactivity series. It is a more reactive substance than hydrogen. So why does that make a difference? Well, if you think about what happened earlier, magnesium was happy to give away its electrons. You think of a more reactive metal still, like sodium or potassium, desperate to give away their outer electron. Magnesium's got two. Magnesium's still quite a reactive metal, wants to give away its electrons. In electrolysis, we're trying to give magnesium 2 plus its two electrons back. It doesn't really want them, okay? Hydrogen, on the other hand, hydrogen is not so reactive. Hydrogen isn't so keen to get rid of its electrons. So given the choice, it's easier to give the electrons back to hydrogen ions than it is to give them to magnesium ions. So. Magnesium is more reactive than hydrogen. So hydrogen or H plus ions gain electrons more easily. And that means whenever I do electrolysis of an aqueous solution, if the metal dissolved is more reactive than hydrogen, I don't get the metal plating the negative electrode. I get hydrogen gas instead. Just to prove the point, I have connected up my electrodes again to 
uh, a solution of sodium chloride. So we've got sodium ions in there, and the negative electrode is the one nearest the camera. And if I switch the power on now, straight away, you will see it's fizzing like mad. And that is hydrogen gas being produced. You won't see any sodium metal. As I say, hydrogen ions will gain electrons more easily because hydrogen is less reactive than sodium. 